Okay, I'm gonna take out time, which I normally don't do this much time. As you can see, I've been busy, and I thought this would be a good learning experience for multiple facets, including there is your fresh air cabin filter. You could see it right down there. That's the fresh air cabin filter. So you get to see how the air intake comes in. <clears throat> Aftermarket condenser. Cooling passages, 44. OEM condenser. Cooling passages, 53. Fins per inch, 20 fins per inch. Fins per inch, 16 fins per inch. You got cheated, you got cheated. Okay, now let's keep on going. And if you pull out the desiccant material and you weigh them both on a scale, just the BBs and the desiccant, you'll find out you got cheated again. Okay, desiccant material. Subcooling, remember I told you how important subcooling was. Your last few rows to do the subcooling in your gas are one of your most important rows. Five. Uh, six. You got cheated again. Aftermarket condenser. The stop the hot 200 degree, 190 degree air from the fan from rolling around to the low pressure side of your thing. They go out and they put these in here. Why do they put these in here? Because if you look directly down below, there's a perfect path to the engine compartment for hot air to blow around, come through, right through this gap and dump 180, 190, 200 degree air right in front of your fins, heating it up, especially your subcooling. You don't want that. Original equipment, aftermarket, you got cheated again. Okay, the, the piece of foam that was glued on here, he tried to rip it off and save it up there. Missing, you got cheated again. If you think you're saving money by putting on aftermarket dress, think again. This will work exactly like the OEM in cold weather conditions, in mild temperatures. These will work and give you pressures that are nearly identical. You usually can't tell unless they're really bad, which I've even had some of those. Okay, so I think I haven't forgot anything, but uh, let's get back to this. Now, let's follow the flow. We come in right here at this fitting. When you look inside the aftermarket and the OEM and you get your micrometer out and your depth meter and everything, you measure them. You will sometimes find out this might be a little machined a little big and it causes leaks. So this is a R1234YF system. Okay, I'm installing this at $150 a pound. I want to make sure there's no leak. So I did, I did a vacuum, I got down to 124 microns of uh, vacuum, I flushed it with nitrogen three times, then I pressurized it with 150 PSI and then went around on the fittings and looked for leaks at the fittings prior to going and vacuuming it one last time before I fill it up. So 155, do your nitrogen decay test, do your, check your fittings, make sure you have no leaks. Now you're going to get ready for doing your charge because you know you're good at least up to, and actually on the YF vehicles, I actually take it up to 170 PSI because the evaporators are more robust. Uh, they're a stronger evaporator supposedly than the original because they're worried about the supposedly flammable refrigerant uh, under certain ideal conditions, yes. Um, I prefer hydrocarbons. I would love to make them all butane propane. Hey. Okay, so we're at 126 microns under vacuum right now, but that's with the pump on at the micron gauge being located at this position, not a sensor located somewhere else in the system. It will be different. Okay, so let's get back to this. Let's look at the entrance. You see these tubes? my thumb you see how small those tubes are okay now let's look at here here's a sample of those tubes you see how small those are 
Okay, you see that? Now, here's a sample of some other tubes. Does this look, does this look familiar? Now look at the size difference. The smaller and the more tubes you have, the more surface area, the more you could dissipate heat. They cheated you again in this aftermarket condenser. Learn your condensers. I write all this down. Every note in every one of my systems I do, I write down everything I find about an aftermarket condenser. I back it up with photos and send it. So when I get a call back, and I do get call backs occasionally, not too much, because the customer never thinks that a year later, when summer rolls around, especially if these were put in in winter, or several months or fall, that they went on a vacation somewhere hot, and their AC doesn't blow right, they never think it was the body shop who installed the aftermarket condenser is the problem. Then it rolls into an unsuspecting technician who's doing the air conditioning with not a lot of experience. He doesn't know this is aftermarket. And he may be the one where he's in Death Valley or Arizona or Texas on a 105 or 110 degree day and he has high, wild, high, high pressure side readings and he's thinking it's overcharged, but it could be charged right. He thinks the fan is wrong, he thinks something's plugged, they, high pressures and they think the compressor is bad. If a compressor could make high pressures, that means the compressor is good, okay? A whole bunch of wild, bizarre stuff starts happening when problems happen from the very get-go. So let's follow this refrigerant path. Here we go at the entrance. This is the entrance right here. Discharge from the compressor, high pressure, vapor, and god damn this music is gonna freaking kill me again. And so it goes in the top. Now you see the separator right here, the solid bar. This is physically cutting this lower half of the condenser off from this half up here. So all the gas that comes from the compressor as a hot gas only goes through these passages only those passages up to this point and it stops. Now these rows, from where my finger is, are forced over to this side. Now they're gonna go over to this chamber. Let's get over to this chamber. And they're all gonna be forced down. You see there's no block right here. They're gonna be forced down. And now they're gonna pass in this other direction because what do you see right here? You see a block right there physical block the gas cannot pass down anymore so now my fingers are pointing in the direction now the gas is going to go back again we're making another pass you ever hear that term multi-pass so now we're taking a second pass back in the other direction so now let's go back to the other side and we're going to come back here this is where they passed now it's going to be forced all the way down here but what do we got again we got a block right here and keep in mind this is the subcooling section. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now this is gonna go back down here to where it's open there, and these, this refrigerant is gonna be forced back into other game. We're making another pass. So let's get back over there, and we're passing, and the refrigerant is flowing in this direction. Now let's crank it over and around, and what do we got? We came back right here. Remember, your subcooling ones are over here. We came up to here. But where are we going? There's no physical passage to drop down there because what do you see missing off of here? Let's get this little doohickey out. What is this? Our supposedly receiver dryer that has the desiccant dryer bag in it. It has a fine wire mesh screen that is really black because the system was ran a little low on refrigerant. Okay, let's, let me see if I can zoom in. Get over to the light. So that black piece of material that you see there, if you see real good, it's a screen. A very, very fine screen. It's going around on four sides. And the refrigerant drops down from inside the tube. Come back over here. Sorry for all the noise in the background. I actually use my DB meter and this is going up the noise in the background here is 98 dB on its peak max above the OSHA standard for eight hours. I think it was 80 dB for an eight hour period. This is at 98 dB. 
my ears are not feeling good. Okay, so let's get back to this. So you come back here and let's put this together. Okay, do you see this? This is part of the receiver and you see that hole? That is where it is forced to enter in this section right here. This hole, and you see, you see these, uh, here's one, two, three, four, five, six. These six match with these six. And then this goes over like that. So this last section that is still a hot vapor, supposedly, goes into this hole in this chamber. So now you fill up this chamber You fill up this entire chamber with a hot gas, maybe a little bit of liquid, has a little bit of liquid, very little, usually a hot gas, and it's forced down through that hole, right down in there, and it comes out in the screen. It's still a vapor with some liquid, some liquid, some vapor. Now this is where the subcooling action happens. The subcooling is forced through these layers and it'll go and travel here. This is the most crucial era where the outside cool, fresh air really needs to pass over these six bottom tubes to take that, let's say, bubbly mix of high pressure gas and refrigerant and cool it and help to condense it down into a liquid. So by the time it gets over here, the discharge tube, this tube is your liquid discharge line. It should build up as a column of liquid backing up into here, backing up into here and have a column of liquid starting to back up inside here. A little different than the commercial units, okay? The way the structure is. So it's only these on this particular mom, it's supposed to be six, but on this aftermarket, it's only five. This backs up as a solid column of a liquid somewhere in here. It depends where you put your sight glass will depend at what the ambient temperature is, what your fill is, is the expansion valve opening up all the way calling for more refrigerant or is it pretty well satisfied and it's metering down and choking off will depend where that liquid column and bubbles start. So you could have liquid here but bubbles here. You could have liquid here but bubbles here. You could have liquid here and be foamy here. So it all depends. That will always move depending on the ambient load condition. So depending where the sight glass is put will depend when and when not and how easy it is to have a clear sight glass. Do not use a clear sight glass as a method of determining a charge because it moves all the time. Just like your superheat moves all the time, cars are much different than fixed speed compressors and residential HVAC systems. What other topic can I go over that I know I'm going to miss? Because this freaking music is driving me nuts. Um, my ear drums are going to bleed. Okay, so that takes care of that. I showed you where everything you're getting cheated when you buy some of these aftermarket condensers. You really got to be careful. Uh, I showed you my pressure testing method because this is YF using 150 PSI. You've seen my leak detector. My electronic one, you know I put UV dye inside of them. You could see where the best place to take your air measurements to get your, actually it's better if you could get on the other side, but that takes a little more work. But you could see the filter of the cabin filter, the top before it goes down and it drops into the spinning squirrel cage fan before it is forced into the evaporator. I think that'll be it for today. Uh, yeah, I took a little bit more time than I normally do and this keeps killing me every time I do this because I, I keep having these texts pop up on my uh, face of my camera as I'm doing texts asking me either where I am or can I do another vehicle or can you come to me today kind of thing. Distracting. Uh, that is it for now. Alright guys, I'll see you and uh, I'm going to go commit suicide by stabbing a knife in both my ears from listening to this. See you. Adios, guys.